Hello, welcome back to my workshop. It's been a while, but today we're finally looking at the Atari anyway, 2800 the joystick. joystick. Now, I was watching the video the by Control Alt Reese that you can see in the background, and he was showing off his collection. I really liked the look of that joystick, and I thought, ah, oh, if only I had one of those. Hang on a minute, let's see if this will work. Oi! Haha, <laughs> success! I managed to sneak it using the power of the internet. So now that I've got it, let's look at making my own version of this using 3D printing and the tools in my workshop. Before we get going, I have to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They provided me with printed circuit boards and also 3D printed parts. The benefit of these resin printed parts is the surface is so smooth, so you don't have the ridges that you would have from a normal 3D printed part without some sort of post-processing. That allows it to move freely inside uh, without too much wear and any parts where it's rubbing against other parts, it will generate less friction. So it will last longer. I highly recommend PCB Way for circuit boards, for 3D printed items in metal, in resin, FDM. They can do all the fancy materials. Thank you so much, Elaine, for understanding while I was off after my operation. Just amazing. I can't thank you enough. So here we have the original Atari 2800 joystick that Reese sent me. And I just loved the design. I thought it was very cool with the paddle control on the top. It's a reasonably easy enough shape to reproduce, but there were a few issues that we'll see as we go along. So I guess we should just take this apart. It's quite simple. There are just two screws on the bottom. Okay, so now we can take the bottom off and the bottom is a, a simple, again, simple enough design. So when we get inside, it gets quite interesting. So we've got the front two plastic buttons with a spring. We then have this contraption in the middle, which is both the joystick and the paddle. So we will be looking at that in detail. Let's get this out. So you'll see that it's just like a cap that fits on. If we take the lead out, the spring out, we take the knob off. Now everything can come out. So the buttons, they sit and they have a groove. So when you push the button in, it pushes that up. So if we push that in, you'll see that it pushes that center part up. So that was a quite interesting design. And then we have the circuit board. If we take that off. So the circuit board is very much like a 2600 controller and we have the dome switches. And then we've got the two at the front. So like I said, when we push, on those, that middle bit pushes down onto there. Circuit board, very easy. And then there's just the paddle in the middle. Switches, fairly easy. Case, fairly easy. So this is the mechanism for the paddle. So it's made of a plastic that's very strong. And these parts here are the parts that push down on those dome switches. And you'll see that they're quite flexible. But at the same time, very, very strong material. And I'm not quite sure what that material is. It has to have enough flex for you to move the joystick about and to push down on the dome switches. Over time, if it doesn't have enough flexibility, they're gonna break. So that was my first issue because 3D printing material doesn't like that kind of thing. First, it's very hard to print. And second, it's just going to flex and break. The design holds the part in place, so that allows you to twist it. Then we've got a ball in the middle, which is part of the case design. That will pivot around on there. These two parts just here 
are wedged in between those two parts and that stops it from rotating. So you'll see that it can't rotate around, but if we rotate around on that ball, you can move it around like a joystick. And then as we turn the paddle, we are not rotating at all. Only the shaft of the paddle is rotating. So I thought it was quite a good design. So let's look at some of the designs that I did for that middle part. So my first design was trying to replicate it and I made the bottom part which would go in there like that and it was printed in ASA basically it's an ABS like material and you can see that part of it broke off it's just not strong enough you see how easy it is to break that off but that was that was okay and then we've got the rounded top um, that fits into that part but as I said I couldn't do the parts that stick out this was one of my testers and we got the parts that stick out so you can see that line just there that's only after a little bit of flex you see that that's a tiny bit of flexing and it literally will break and it no longer will flex. So most home 3D printing materials are just not good. To reproduce that, it's just not going to work. So I decided to break the part down into sections that were easier to print and had more details. So we've got the bottom part and then I'll show you the completed one. So this is pretty much the final one. And you see, I printed it in different colors, how this is broken down into sections. This is one of the later ones when I put a ball bearing on the bottom to help it so that it moves around a bit freely. Basically what we don't want is plastic rubbing on plastic because it will wear out. So let's take this apart and it's screws that go through to a captive knot. So we've got the bottom part, which has got the ball bearing in, that holds it all together. We then have the top part, which has got a rounded top, but again, 3D printed, so you can see the layer lines on the top. You can hear that they're rough. Even printing in the ABS-like material where we can sand it, we still have that pattern on the top. And the problem is, is that when that's rubbing on the 3D printed case, it makes a noise and it's not a very good smooth feeling. But then we have this middle part that holds the potentiometer in place. So that fits in and we've got all of the modeling parts so that everything fits together nicely. So that is my final design for the moment. We've got the parts that stop it from rotating at the bottom. Splitting it up allowed me to develop the parts individually without printing everything over and over and over. But it does mean that we can't copy our original design where it pushes down on the switches. So that meant that we had to go to micro switches. So this is our original case. It's a fairly simple design but there's a few parts that come from injection molding that we can't replicate easily in 3D printing. Mainly we've got this texture and we could do fuzzy skin and then we've got these shiny parts just here and I found out that this is done in the actual mold and the injection molding and they spray the surface with some material, some liquid, which makes it um, go funny. So it would normally look like that and then they spray the parts that they don't want to be shiny. You see that we've got shiny parts on the side, and shiny parts on the back. It's basically a tube uh, split into two parts. But if we look inside, we have the details that we need to replicate. So we've got our parts where the screws go in. This is the part that the joystick will move around in. 
and then this is the part that will restrain the joystick movement from rotating around too much and then we have that like nipple part that the joystick sits on. There is a lip around the edge so that the two parts fit together nicely. And then there is what's called a glamour line around the edge. So, it, so they're not trying to hide the fact that it's split and they're using that as a design detail. So I am using 123 Design. It's an old Autodesk program. I just know how to use it and I'm too stubborn to learn anything else. We start off by doing a 2D sketch. It's just lines and we set the basic shape up. I do a tester and then I work out the shapes that I want for the various stages down the base of the joystick. If you remember, it has the bulge. On. Then we have the point at the end where the buttons go. So that's the first job. Now we have the basic 2D shapes. We use what's called a loft procedure. And that takes those 2D shapes and it extrudes them between the various sections that we've created. So it creates a nice smooth transition. Once we've done our basic shell, I modified the beginning and the end so that we can cap the two ends and it becomes a solid object. It's not perfect. You can see this little bit here is like a twist. So we will need to fix that afterwards. Now we want to create the other part of the case and we take the beginning and the end because the top is roughly a flat shape and we just use that but we modify the lip that runs around the edge so that it fits on the inside and then we give it a little bit of an offset to allow for 3D printing tolerances. We do the loft between the two, we cap the ends and there we have the basic shape for the top. The next job is to make the top and the bottom fit and we do lots of little fiddly things to make sure that the lips run all the way around. I didn't put the lips into the sections that we capped on the end, so we need to do those. And then we need to make sure that the top bit fits properly into the bottom bit and also fix that wiggly bit that I showed you in the picture. So just lots of tweaking and fine tuning until we get the top and bottom to fit correctly. Now we're going to put some details onto the top and the bottom. And I start out by creating the flat section on the bottom and then we move on to creating the rounder section on the top where the actual joystick will pivot around in. So we just create a semicircle and we flatten it down, cut the hole out in the middle, put one on the top, make a copy, move it down and delete it from the inside. And that will extend the shape of the case with that nice rounded top. The last detail to add are the ridges on the lower section of the top. So I slice into it, separating the top and the bottom and make like a wedge and I can copy that wedge, but then I can resize it to make it a little bit smaller. Uh, and that will basically make the, the ridge shape. So we just copy a big one, a small one, a big one and a small one and then merge it back together again. And there we go. The last step that I do is just change the color so it looks more like the final product and then we add in the knob that I'd already made previously and that was just made with the lofting pretty much in the same way. So that's how we did it in the CAD. Now let's get on to prototyping. You see that I've got a lot of different parts for testing different functions. Like these were printed face down because it's quicker to print that way. And we're not really bothered about how it looks. We are testing how things line up and how things fit together. So we have to test, I wanted to test things like how the joystick fits in uh, and how things move. And then as they go together, how tall it is internally and how things fit. So all, all of the clearance problems so that's why we have so many of these parts until I got the fitting of the potentiometer correct, the fitting of uh, the internal movement correct, and then the clearance inside, the more revisions of those. This is the first full case that I printed and printed on my Prusa. We can see it printing just now with a quick time lapse and I'm using organic supports, which is a feature of the new Prusa Slicer Alphas. So it saves so much time. We're printing upwards like this and there's lots of features inside that stick out. 
So this is my bottom, haha, <laughs> and this is the original. So there are lots of features that are the same, but I tweak things to make 3D printing easier. So for example, this ramp just here, because it's printed standing up, that means I don't need to have any support on that part. So here we have a quick ASMR of me removing the supports for this orange case. This is the top, and my first version, I just screwed micro switches directly into the case. Again, you can see more of the parts where I've got these angles. This part at the bottom, these parts just here, I've got angles so that when it prints standing up, I don't need as many supports. Because supports is wasted material and it just takes time. So we have the bottom, that sits in there. We have the 3D printed nipple bit. We've got the two points that restrain the movement. And then the joystick can move around, which is exactly the same as the original. There's the original. It sits in, it can't rotate. You can move that one around. We can move that one around. We then have the micro switches. So if we put this on the top, That moves around. So we've got our joystick action and we can rotate it. Using the same principles to design the case, so the uh, drawing the sketches and lofting, I did reproduce the knob as well. It is slightly different. The potentiometer that I got uh, didn't have the same shape on, on the shaft. So you can see that the D shape doesn't go all the way down and inside the knob there's a part that stops it from going too far. So on, on the potentiometer that I brought it goes all the way down to the bottom. So we had to change the way that the knob was designed to allow for that. Then you'll also see that there is a switch which was added afterwards. So when I first tested this it worked okay but I wasn't understanding. I, could, I couldn't get the fire buttons to work because when you use a paddle, the fire button is actually the right movement of the joystick. And on the Atari 2800, there's actually a switch so that you change between joystick mode and paddle mode. So I've put that onto here. So basically when the switch is down, left, right, up and down and fire act as normal. And when you flick the switch, it changes the right movement of the joystick to be the fire button. So that was good. It was proof of concept and it worked fairly well. But I didn't like screwing the switches into the plastic. It's never a good thing. So we needed to move on from this now that we know that it works. So here we have my final-ish design for the case. And I'm printing this in uh, everyone sparkle black and you have to agree that it looks amazing it's got that sparkle which hides all the layer lines but it still has a nice shine to it if we compare the two you'll see that i got the dimensions a little bit different on the length it's not a, a, a big deal but the overall design is there uh, and i got the ridges again it's not exactly the same but it's close enough we then got our side profile and our back. So I couldn't work out how to do that shape and merge it into the rest of the case cleanly. It, was, it wasn't going very well. I was not getting the parts on the side that I liked. So I just decided to just flatten the bottom part off and it works out okay. There you can see the parts for the screws. And I also changed the cable access on the original, it's in the top. I've put mine at the bottom. It just made it easier to do the routing inside. We have 
our glamour line that runs around the edge and we have our switch. If we look inside, this is my prototype printed circuit board that I machined on my CNC. We've got three screws that hold that in place and supports built into the case. Everything is aligned around that central peg. So if we take this out, you can see that we've got the right angled switches now that sit on the bottom and the joystick switches sit on the top and they're staggered so that they're central to the knobs. We then have our switch to switch between paddle mode and joystick mode and our connector. So this was my prototype um, but it doesn't work because I can't do through hole. So I really wasn't able to test this, which is a shame because it didn't work. So this is the board that PCB Way made for me. And you'll see that it's exactly the same. My, uh, my CNC work was very good. It was very close. But I did the classic trick of getting them the up, down, left and right backwards because you design it one way, but then you forget that the joystick is going that way. So I, I just got it wrong. Um, uh, but as always, fantastic service and quality of PCBs from PCB Way. So we've looked at our original and how it worked. We've looked at uh, my many stages of prototyping and how I reproduced the motion system, sort of, how the original mechanism worked, but my limitations in the material that I've got access to where I can't do these springy wings without them breaking. So let's reveal my final working design. So this is it. This is the last one that I've made. You'll see I reproduced the knob as close as I could. We've got all the details on there and I added that nice orange ring. This is the sparkle black again and it looks fantastic. Um, I've got orange buttons to, just because I think black and orange is very much an Atari thing. I don't have matching screws in the bottom, <laughs> typical. But this does work. So let's quickly take this apart and we'll have a quick look at the final parts. Okay. So nothing changed too much. You'll see um, all of the chamfers that I added so that when it prints standing up, it needs far less support. Every time I was designing it, I was changing little bits. There are the buttons that possibly still need some work, but they just push down on the micro switches. This is the 3D printed parts that came from PCB Way in that nice, strong, flexible material. And we've got the ball bearing in there now with an indent in the case for the ball bearing to sit on so we don't have plastic rubbing on plastic. And this is the PCB from PCB Way, and everything is wired up. But if you remember, I did say that I made some mistakes. So if we take this out, you'll see my budgets. So like I said, I got the left and right up and down wrong. And the up and down isn't a big problem. We can just change uh, how we wire up on there. But the left and right has the added function of the switch, which changes between joystick mode and paddle mode. So I couldn't just change the wires. I had to, to put link wires in and cut some traces to flip the left and right switches and join them up to the paddle mode switch. Not a big deal. I will fix it for the final version. You'll also see the little cable retention. It's a little bit fiddly. I need to work on how these buttons go in, something to hold them in place. So we just kind of have to hold it. We don't forget to put our ball bearing in. So that just goes on. And like I said, this shaft is different. It doesn't have uh, a, the part on the D shaft. Uh, so I just made the, uh, the hole in there go all the way down and um, it's just the perfect length. So you see that there's next to no gap. So here we, here we are. This is both of them side by side. The actual 
actions and the way that it works is pretty close. But I have the problem. So on the Atari joystick, it has that plastic which is very springy. Uh, I have to push it quite hard to move it about and it self-centers. There's enough force on there to keep it straight. Mine is very loose. So it feels very nice to use, but it droops. There's not enough force to hold it up. If you are using it and you're holding it flat, it's not a big deal. Which is quite nice on that ball bearing. It has a nice feeling to it. But if you're holding it up and you're using it more like this, it just falls down and it activates the down switch. So I need to find some way to make itself center. And I've tried a few different things. So you can see in this one, there are holes in the bottom. And what I was doing was putting in these little rubber feet. And that did give enough, um, but it didn't feel very nice. So it is one possibility. This was another idea. So this is a part that goes in the middle and I put springs on there. So it was pushing down on springs and it had a bit of force, but couldn't find the right strength of springs and they creaked. And again, it didn't feel very nice. So I have this flexible material by everyone, not sponsored. I bought this with my own money. However, if you would like to work with me, please let me know. And this is TPU, it's rubber. So it's flexible. So I was trying to design uh, some way to, to act as like tension on this. And I haven't really come up with a way to do that just yet. So I'm, I'm basically calling out to the maker community, everybody that I know, I'm looking for your suggestions to add some way to make this self center. So it has a nice feeling to it, like the Atari one. It doesn't take too much force that we're going to break things. But at the same time, it's easy enough for uh, people to print themselves. I am going to put these files available. So if you wanted to make one of these, you'll be able to get a circuit board from PCBWay. You could print your own internals if you want, or you could order those from PCBWay. Bear in mind, you'll have to order five of them. I do have five of everything. So I could be listing five of these for sale. Once I get this motion thing working out, because although this is nice, I don't think it's good enough at this point to be selling them. So I'm calling out for you. Part two, if I get enough of them, will be testing out your crazy ideas to make this self a center. And we'll see if we can find a good one that works. Um, we need to put on a sticker. I have a nice Atari sticker that we can put on just as a finishing touch. So I have these stickers from a guy in Poland. He was on Etsy, does have instructions in here. So it says, clean the surface by removing any dust and foreign substances. So we'll just use a little bit of IPA. Okay, slowly tear off and release paper on the back of the metal sticker. Attach the sticker with the metal attached on the upper transparent layer. Rub gently by applying pressure. So, try and take out all the air bubbles. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Carefully and slowly tear off the upper transparent protection layer. Wow, that looks awesome. Oh, wow, that looks awesome. Such a small detail, but that adds so much to it. It looks wicked. So we've got my 2600 connected up. Unfortunately, my Woody stopped working while I was making this video. So, but we've got the Junior set up with my SD based multi cart and we are plugged in. So this is the first problem. You see, as I tilt it, it's basically pressing down. So we have to hold it kind of flattish. But it does work. We are in the lower position. Let's go right. 
So we have the switch in the lower position, which is joystick mode. So if we go into Activision and we go across to Kaboom, we push the switch up, we restart a game. And you can see it's working great. I really like this game. Damn it, it's quite hard. There we go. So it's working really, really well. Let's just go to a joystick based game. So we'll go back to Activision and you see it's doing the down too often, Mega Mania. Uh, not paying attention. So again, joystick part is working really well. We've just got that issue with the pushing down because uh, it needs some kind of self-centering. Let's have a quick look at some other paddle games because I've never really played that many. Okay, so let's go to Atari Breakout. Start the game. Quite nice to use. The, the potentiometers are quite stiff, so you can get fine, like fine details, but then you can move it quite fast as well. So, Night Driver. Oh, you have to hold. Well, this is hard. Wow, I don't like that because the car doesn't turn. So you think it's not doing anything. Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> So yeah, that's that's enough of, of that. Let's do a, a final roundup. So there we go. That's the original and that's my recreation. I love my recreation. Uh, I say this every time, but it's possibly the best thing that I've made and designed. I just love how it looks, but I still like the original. I think this is also a very cool design and it's a shame that we never saw this over here in the UK. So like I said, I have a fundamental issue that this is just too floppy. And I'm hoping that uh, we can work something out and I'm looking forward to seeing your ideas to make this better. It feels like forever since I made an actual proper video, but this project has been like three, four months in the process and these things just take time. But then uh, I took some time off because I had an operation on my nose, which is why I sound so nasally. So nasally, 
uh, I loved designing this and problem solving. That's one of the things that I like to do most, iteration designing. And then when they turn out to be so gorgeous, it's just a, a massive win in my books. So thank you so much to Reese for sending me the original. And I know that he wants to see one of these, so I'll probably have to make another one just to send it to him as a thank you. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye.